Hello, Dan. Hi, Matt. Welcome back to Superboo. <laughs> Always you. lovely to see you, mate. Yeah, you too. And um, I, I think we'll just quickly say um, you've had a bit of a rebrand redesign. This is your new logo. Um, yeah, I, I did a collaboration with Matt Hodgson, uh, initial, initiated by uh, Ben Dibkid. Oh, yes. So um, I think it turned out pretty good. Yeah, so this was kind of your original logo. So anyone looking, anyone with one of the original, the OGs, yeah. that's what you would have had. So uh, Yeah, I, and the thing is with the, with the legacy look is that the new thing that I'm doing, uh, I, I couldn't have done that. I uh, see. So here we are, your new, uh, with your new face plates, your new uh, logo intact. And this is what you're showing off today, is it? This is your new module, the SW3 Splice. Yeah, it's, it's a prototype uh, that will be released uh, later this summer. And as, as you can see, uh, with, the old, with the legacy look of my modules, I could not have get, get gotten all that in there. <laughs> so what it is, it's, um, uh, it's, a, it's made, let's see, wave splicing simple. I've been going on about uh, doing that with my Zero module and my Switch module for, I don't know, five, six years. But it involves a lot of patching. What do you mean by wave splicing exactly? Well, wave splicing is um, uh, wh when you with the Switch uh, cut from one wave to another wave, and you can do it really fast. You can go at up to high audio rate, and you don't get any clicks. OK. Um, and the question I often get is if it's uh, looking for zero crossings, but it's not because two waves may never cross zero at the same time. So it's okay. um, it's looking for when two waves have the same voltage. Okay. And then I switch super super fast. So give us an example then. Why would we want to do that? What does this module allow us to do? Well, it it makes it possible to switch any source together with some other source. Okay. So if you have a bunch of uh, uh, oscillators or uh, samplers, whatever, um, or LFOs, uh, or whatever, uh, then you can switch them together and get new results and get more out of the things that you already have. Okay. Um, and I have a, a simple demo thing going on here. Yeah, okay. Um, and I, I've chosen to, to go with, um, with an analog, uh, with, a, with a sample. And the reason is that that is harder to switch click-free than if you would have a, an um, oscillator. Okay. So, yeah, take us through that. Yeah, so what I have going on here is I have, uh, I have a drum sample on one side. On the other side, I have a, a filtered version of the same. And if I put this in the middle, now, now they are spliced together. I see. So they're not just summed together like volume. No. They're actually interacting with one another. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. So, so, so the, the, this is switching at very high rate. So it's, it's, so it's, it's switching between those two signals very, very, very fast. Yeah. Right. But, but, but I, I can control how fast it's switching as well. If, if, I, um, if I add a, an oscillator into the D input, so, or a, like a gate signal or something, and if I turn that down... Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's going much slower now. Yeah. So then, then you're getting... Oh, that's it's quite an interesting result, isn't it? Yeah, it is. So you've got this one with the, with the filtering appearing whenever the dry one ducks down and vice versa. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah, so and, and I, I can show you what would happen if I, if I would switch it from this sort of intelligent switching to hard, clip, hard switching, then you would hear the clicks. So now it's mainly just a lot of clicking. And if I switch the intelligence on again, that just goes away. 
Right. So, so what you can do with this? Oh, oh yeah, and, and then you can also go. Uh, let's see. I also introduced. Uh, so you can divide the switching by two or, or or by four and so on. But then, then you have a, another cool thing, and that is. Uh, uh, now I only have mono sources. You can you, you can do this with stereo sources. Okay. Uh, but then you can switch, so you get um, you you copy the mono the two mono sources over to the second side, and um, and set this thing into stereo. And I should. Oh, so it can be stereo as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, we've got two outputs. I see. And and then you can start messing with oh uh, <laughs> divide by four on one side and divide by two on the other side maybe that's brilliant uh, and uh, if you go really slow oh yeah now they're out of phase that's a lovely result listening to yeah. this on headphones yeah so you you, uh, you need to hear this in stereo it makes me feel drunk yeah. <laughs> But, but if you don't want them to end up uh, with the, these counters in out of sync, you have reset inputs. So, so you can... Um, oh, so you can bring it back in on the beat or something Yeah, yeah, like yeah. you yeah. can do a hard reset on that thing. And then you have one more thing, of course. Yeah. Uh, and that is, if, if you set the, the stereo switch to, to this arrow in two directions, what what you're doing then is uh, uh, every you you, you just uh, swap channels. So whatever is in on. So like this, you have the drums on one side and the filter on the other side, and now it's swapped. And then you get. And, and just right. to show, show you how clean this is, I, I can do uh, collapse things to mono on my mix module. So I, if I do, turn that on, it's just like you've had them um, yeah, mixed together uh, on top of each other. And you go back to... Or, or if you... If you just have one signal and you want to to get that to be in stereo, I have some other acoustic thing going on, like uh, let's see, I should have some kind of. Yeah, we can hear that. So th this is a uh, that that kind of sample, and then it's quiet on one side. So you could. Uh, Yeah, you can switch things up that way too. Cool. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, so really, really interesting. Thank you. Yeah, I, I haven't seen this before, and it, it's not something I've really been aware of, but now what I'm hearing from the results, mm -hmm. I'm thinking of numerous ways of using this to come up with really interesting textures just derived from you know, one sound, another, the same sound, then going through a filter or some effects, yeah, and, and then switching between them. And, and also, if you if you're just uh, switching um, LFOs, so you have one uh, on on one side and more complex on yeah. the other one, uh, and you go in this stereo mode and do divide by two on one and four on the other one, and yeah, so you can get real organic results that way. Cool. So is this available now? Can we buy it now? Uh, not yet. I need to do a. Um, uh, a revision. Oh, th there's a, there's another function in there that I need to get working, okay. and uh, that is on one of the switches. Uh, I can switch it so it's not just switching every time when the signals are equal. I could also turn on a slope detector, so it's only switching when both signals are traveling in the same direction. <laughs> oh, okay. And that way um, you get even less uh, artifacts. Right. So, uh, yeah, as oh. I said, I, I was so try, try, trying to do this all the way as much as possible. Well, yeah. everything I could 
think of sort of in a very, very small package. Sure. So when, when do you think we'll likely see this come out in a couple of months, end of the year? No, midsummer. Midsummer. Yeah, some. Yeah. yeah. Do you have a price in mind? Um, around uh, 200 euros. I think just below 200 euros. Lovely. So it it it, it, it should be uh, well available, e yeah. easy to to get it. So you get some more yeah interesting things to experiment with. Cool, man. Yeah. Thanks. Well, congratulations on your. I guess this is your first one since your new redesign so it is yeah nice one brilliant thanks so much for sharing this today thank you thanks dan yeah